What's up and welcome to another episode of the Los Wise Guys podcast. I am one of your hosts, Eslam, a.k.a. Ra, God of the Sun, accompanied by Dan, Papa Sun Killer, and Disco, a.k.a. Emperor Disco. <laughs> damn, look at them guns. God damn, bro. Yeah, I'm, Good I'm, shit. Uh, I beat I'm, the, I'm the other one. I'm the other one. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I beat off. That's good. Get that wrist strength up. Mm-hmm. There you go. Got that dexterity. Do you double? Do you double wrist also, with your penis, just like you do with your <laughs> watches? Not even you know, hands, I, uh, just wrist. I'm just a righty <laughs> kind of guy, but you know, uh, recently now that my body's crumbling and I'm 30, you know, I have to switch to the left <laughs> occasionally sometimes. You know, but... <laughs> no one told me that you got to switch. There's no rules oh, in the rule book. <laughs> Uh, no, there is no rules in the rule book. You you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you do what feels right. You know. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, we are here to review oh Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power, Episode One and Two. And now, by the time this comes out, I'm sure Episode Three has come out. Listen, anyways, we're gonna drop some knowledge, and we're gonna give our predictions for the rest of the season because we will not be revisiting Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power again until the season finale where we are going to cover the rest of the season but before that please don't forget to like subscribe share rate and review our youtube channel comment below tell us what you thought about the lord of the rings rings of power um and uh give us a subscribe that will surely help our channel to grow and it will be very very helpful uh, also, go check out the Los Wise Guys website, loswiseguys.com. It has all our amazing content up there with more to come each day. And then go check us out on our social medias, slide in our DMs, have a conversation with us. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll get this party started. Um, so, guys, what were your initial thoughts about Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power? <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll start off, or unless you want to go. No, you got it. I, uh, man, I was kind of torn. I, I wanted to like it because it's like Lord <laughs> of the Rings, and it's I love Lord of the Rings. There's so much yeah. lore, so much, so much stuff that like to to delve into. But uh, after watching these first two episodes, I, I only saw the first two. I don't know if there's any more out, but uh, I, I just there's so many characters, and I. I don't really, I don't really care about them that much. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, like, uh, I need to see more into the show to really attach to them, but off the first two episodes, there's just so many things and so many people happening. I, I kind of don't really care for any of them, especially the Harfoots. <laughs> That's interesting. Dan, what do you got? I didn't like it. I was bored out of my mind. Um, yeah, I just I honestly wasn't expecting that's, it to be good, but yeah, yeah, I was bored throughout the. That was the, the consensus of the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of felt the same way. Uh, I was very disappointed in what was what was given to us, uh, and they spent a lot of money on this show. Uh, visually, it looks beautiful, but. Other than that, there's no meat to it. Mm-hmm. The The dialogue isn't there. The story so far isn't gripping enough. Even if it's a slow burn story, which was The Lord of the Rings, was a slow burn story. But it was so gripping, you were interested in each... Each movie was three hours plus. And if you watch the extended editions, they're even longer. And there's not action in every single scene of the movies. Um, so, so that means the story itself, as it was told, was exciting and gripping enough to keep you for that three hours. So this for two hours couldn't even do that. Right. Um, which was very disappointing. Uh, I was hoping for more, but. Uh, this is what we got. What was also funny is that Amazon decided to stop the reviews uh, on their site. 
because they w- didn't want to get review bombed. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, we're just like, you know, holding it for 72 hours or blah, blah, blah. And they still haven't released like the reviews. And Rotten Tomatoes, I forgot what they gave it. It's like an 85. But like the audience score is like in the 30s. It's Man. like really bad. Um, I watched a couple of YouTube videos just to see how people are reacting to it. Um, and it's it's been pretty much consistent. Like there's some people that are like, nah, give it some time. Like it should like get better or whatever. Like it wasn't that bad or blah, blah, blah. And I mean... It shouldn't have to, and I usually am like, nah, I'll, I'll give it like a full season, but goddamn, like when you have one of the most interesting IPs, like it shouldn't be this hard to like get people like hooked on it, especially after like in the first episode, everybody should be hooked. Uh, that was not the case. I'm, I'm so sad that it was disappointing like this. I was really looking forward to this. So far, Prime Video has been doing a great job with, like, these sci-fi fantasy adaptations like The Boys. Um, Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time. They, uh, they also did Invincible. Like, they have, like, a, Paper Girls was really good. Like, they had, like, a decent, like, track record. And they have the money. So I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And then it was just not. And I was just like, God damn I, I heard that Amazon uh, signed them for like five seasons, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, <laughs> like, the show I is mean, planned. You would think you would think with Lord of the Rings, you know, that would be a good thing, but after these first two episodes, I don't know. <laughs> well, saying it's five seasons is a good thing, right? Because that's how um, Breaking Bad was planned, right? He, like the showrunner, the writer, whatever. He was like, "I'm going to tell this story in five seasons." He knew how exactly he wanted to tell the story, where it was going to go, and how it was going to end. That's why the show was so successful. Not everybody liked it, like myself, but uh, it had a lot of good parts in it. That's besides the point. Here, I feel like they're like, we're just going to throw a bunch of money at this and hope it works. Peter Jackson reached out and was like, I can help. And they ghosted him. And (laughs) it's just like, you guys fucked up. (laughs) <laughs> you guys really fucked up in doing that. Like you should have taken his, should have taken his notes. You should have taken his expertise. He adapted the Lord of the Rings books, and they're really good. And I feel like, and I've heard this online. I feel like what this is gonna do, and I agree with this opinion, is that th- like this is gonna make The Hobbit all that much more better. And a lot of people love The Hobbit, um, and then there were people that had some issues with it. Um, maybe it didn't need to be three movies. Maybe it did. Who knows? Whatever. But I feel like this is going to do the same where the, the Star Wars sequels made the prequels look a lot better. You know what I mean? So, uh, some people, but yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) Like you enjoyed the sequels. Um, you hated Jar Jar Binks. I mean, okay. Yeah. I hated Jar Jar Binks. I enjoyed (laughs) the, yeah, 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 I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. uh, So, um, he was like an uh, a sore for you in the in the prequels, but the right. for the most part, <laughs> I mean he's still hilarious, but yeah, he sucked. Uh, oh, yeah, I loved pizza, blah, blah, blah. I loved when I Colin uh, Moriarty would shit on Jar Jar when he would did go he, on does, his. Is that a thing he did? I think he he's done it on like the the old episodes of Kind of Funny when he was on there. Okay, uh, like the Game Over Greggy show back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah, back um, I feel like one time I was listening and then he just like went off on like Jar Jar Binks and it was the funniest shit, but yeah, Colin would just go off on things. Yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, it was very entertaining. We have Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power right now on your screen. uh, If you're watching uh, on YouTube, which I highly suggest if you're only listening, Um, we have uh, Galadriel, uh, Elrond, and then we have sauron the first episode of lord of the rings uh rings of power we get introduced to uh the elves in their uh undying lands 
and then uh, Morgoth and then the elves go to war. They travel to Middle Earth. They leave the Undying Lands. They go to Middle Earth. They fight the war uh, against Morgoth. Um, and then that's the end of Morgoth. He was literally there for the fucking prologue, which was very, very disappointing. This is the guy who made Sauron. Sauron, right? Sauron was his right hand man yeah, after he was like Morgoth. Mentor. Yeah, after uh, Morgoth died, Sauron takes over. But it's just like you had a chance there, at least for this season, you could have literally set up Sauron this whole season by just using Morgoth. And there was, I know there were stories that J.R.R. Tolkien has written about Morgoth that you could have used for this whole season. Like this, if you had already planned to do five seasons we should have had a full season of morgoth at least a full season of it's just stories about morgoth and how the elves were dealing with him and all this shit because he did a lot like i was again I, I i took a deep dive i went in started hearing stories about like what morgoth did and my god there was so much they could have done this first season just about morgoth uh, and slowly setting up the rise of Sauron, we had we had a we had a prologue of Morgoth, and then we jumped into Sauron. It's like oh, we pushed him back; he disappeared, and he might be there, right? Galadriel is the only one that's like, no, he's still around. The evil's not been beaten. Um, that's pretty much the first episode, right? We get introduced to like the characters. We get introduced to Galadriel. We get introduced to. Elrond, which is both names we recognize from Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, Elrond was played by Hugo Weaving. Galadriel, I forgot the actress's name, but she's also very famous. Oh, man, uh, I know it too. It's upsetting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, we, the again, the first episode, disappointed. We get introduced to these characters. They're not much happening. So far, the only interesting character we have is Kate Elrond. Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Thank, Thank you. you Kate Blanchett. Uh, Kate Blanchett. Jesus. Right. Um, the only interesting character so far is Elrond. Uh, did not know he was only half elf, um, mm -hmm. which was wild. My, yeah, that my was favorite, My favorite character is the uh, the meteor man. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's wanna, an episode two. The stranger. I wanna... Oh. Okay, I have right. I have some I have some theories that I heard about on the internet about the the stranger. Uh, one thing. Is... Um. One thing I want to mention, one character that I popped for when they popped, when they showed up was um, Celebrimbor, who was not oh, in Brimbor? any of the previous yeah. uh, Celebrimbor, where he wasn't in any of the previous movies. Uh -huh. But um, I don't know if this is spoiler territory or not. So do you want to do spoilers now or save that? Yeah, yeah, go for yeah, it. We can do spoilers. spoilers. Uh, Celebrimbor is the is, he made the rings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when he, they, when they said the Smith, I I assume. Yeah, but I, the, I just wanted to be. You know, some people are. So I was just like. I was eh. I was actually going to ask about that. Um, if he was the same, if that was the Smith from uh, okay. Shadows of Mordor. Yeah. That's the only reason why. So I does, yep, I recognize the name. So so is a uh, is is Sauron like low key Calibrimbor or like? No. So, from what I remember from the games, it is, I, I thought Sauron made the ranks. So, yeah, what happened in the games, if I remember correctly, I played this forever ago. Um, Celebrimbor, remember, there's multiple rings. Celebrimbor made them all. And then um, he was deceived by Sauron to create one ring that was more powerful than them all. Yeah. Now, granted, this is from the game. I don't know if this is accurate. Uh, turns out, so at my job now, um, there's this girl who's a major Lord of the Rings fan. Nice. And uh, I was talking to her about Rings of Power. And she was telling me, like, yeah, this is nothing like what it should be she's like this is based off the Cimmerillion, which she has like an original copy of so she's nice. like a hardcore like fan first edition yeah, yeah that's what she said she said it's like first edition and everything so it's like all right so she like she knows her stuff she was like spouting like all this Lord of the rings talent. She was like all right she knows her stuff and um what's it called she was even telling me it's like the game itself is inaccurate to the story so i was like all right i was going off the game I, that's all i know so i don't mm -hmm. i don't know enough about lord of the rings to really uh the show which Aslam, you and I did a whole reacts to on YouTube yeah. when somebody did tell us in the chat. It was just like, yeah. hey, they 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 schooled us on some stuff, and hey, it was like, hey, we we welcomed it. Yeah, um, no, they uh, they definitely gave us a lot of helpful information. Um, what where we thought, um, what I we said something about Sauron that was incorrect. I and I had said corrected. that I thought Sauron was an elf because I remember getting that from the game where Sauron I yeah. think disguised himself as an elf or something so along those Sauron lines. Sauron is he a shapeshifter. 
Sauron so, yeah. is like a god almost or an angel or some shit. He's 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 a higher Mortal. being. Yeah. He's yeah. he's yeah. kind of like Morgoth, kind of like uh Gandalf. Like Gandalf is like the angel version in this um in this universe, right? He he was they were sent down mm-hmm. to uh Middle like Earth Gandalf. to guide people um the way the the higher power wanted the things to go, but they couldn't directly interfere. Um, so that's why Gandalf couldn't actually like fight and stuff. Like he could only help um, sway the tides. Um, damn, I forgot what I was saying. Um, um you were talking about uh, characters, and I I jumped in about Calibrimbor. Yes. So yes, Calibrimbor, and in the uh, in the first episode, or maybe in the second episode, he he talks to Elrond, and he's like, "I want to build the forge." And I'm like, okay, so that's where the the forge is where the rings are going to be made. Except for the ring of power, which is going to be made in Mordor, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Was it Mount Doom of Mordor, or am I just making that up? Uh, Hey, fuck (laughs) it. They're making shit up that's wrong, too, so why not? uh, (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) It's the Los Wise guys edition. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so the the Silmarillion... um, isn't actually like written like Lord of the Rings. It's more like just notes and like short stories. Uh, I guess that was his notes and his short stories to kind of help him build the universe. And it and was then, never even finished. Yeah. Yeah. I read somewhere that his son found those yep. notes and his son started like making uh, more books post uh, his death. Yeah, yeah from, exactly. From those notes, there's so much to unpack and knowledge there that I have one of his just, books. I forgot what it's called. It's like the children of something or other. Just yeah, like, yeah, the children of random, something. Yeah, fit random uh, like name, but yeah, yeah, Christopher Tolkien. That's his name. Yeah, but uh, just imagine the literary masterpiece Lord of the Rings would have been if Tolkien actually was able to finish his work. I feel like I feel like the only like. I mean, Lord of the Rings is. It's just the the whole Middle Earth. No, no, the, thing, yeah, like know? the whole saga, right? And yeah. Because there was definitely more to be done, um, and or at least prequel wise, there was definitely more to be done, like more to expand on the universe. And I don't know. I feel like like um, George R. R. Martin is very close to doing that with J. R. Uh, R. J. R. R. Tolkien. Oh, you're talking about yeah. Keep going. <laughs> House of the I'm Dragon. Like, I'm, and, I'm multitasking right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Game of Thrones and his universe <laughs> building. And then I feel like the the person that's the closest to like having this super vast universe building, and has been doing it consistently for 25 years, is the one and only Ichiro Oda with One Piece. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it it is what it is, you know what I mean? He has been doing it for 25 years and and my god, I hope I wished Tolkien would have started when he was younger so he can do the same with Lord of the Rings cuz my god, this is a beautiful beautiful uh masterpiece of a universe uh to, that he has it's, created. It's so rich. There's so many areas where he could dive into and yeah. it's just crazy as as someone that like writes my own stuff and creates my own stuff to just see something like that where like you could just see the amount of time and energy and and you know thought that he put into every little thing and uh, you gotta respect that no matter what like whether you like created his own language bro it's it's crazy (laughs) he created his own language which is wild I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been done a few times, but still, nevertheless, but very impressive. I, I don't care how many times it's done each time that someone can create their own yeah. language. I mean, is, think about is, it. You got Klingon and Dothraki, Klingon, yeah. Elvish. Yeah. Like, there's so many cool, like, just the fact that you did that is insane. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Like, you'd have to... <sighs> My God, these, these, these genius writers, man. Yeah. Um, we could barely speak English. <laughs> Shit, They're <bro>. making other languages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I can't fucking speak English, so I can. Hey, my speak... child will have what he be can. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> exactly. anything. Can be <laughs> I stand by that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody That's... who doesn't know what that reference is, no, I did not have a stroke. Um, <laughs> that is uh, something that Disco wrote back in the olden <sighs> days when we were in high school. Um, some would say our second age. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I was trying to say, but I literally nobody knows what you're trying to say. Pad. You actually yeah. wrote it out, like yeah. <laughs> you sat there, you thought of it, and you put it down on pen and paper. It's like, yeah, I got this. That's how. That's how. I was getting classy. Yo, this sentence is gonna be have. fire. Um, <laughs> they gonna love this. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, like I said before, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got, I keep thinking about it. I just imagine somebody <laughs> listening to this podcast like, "Hang on, let me. What the fuck did he just say?" <laughs> <laughs> My child will have he be can. <laughs> yes, uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, like I mentioned before, the 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 visuals of the show is, is very beautiful. They definitely did not skimp on any visual effects. They they poured a lot of money into the show, uh, as you can see here. By uh, this is the elves in the Undying Lands, um, which has a name that I forgot. Some of them. Right? Yeah, Valinor. Val- Valindor. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Valindor. Close enough. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that is it. Uh, hey and man, then you're, you're closer than any of us, so I'll, I'll take it. Uh, and then this is the uh, Elvish city in um, in Middle Earth, right? Uh, again, very beautiful, uh, very well detailed, amazing, um, uh, amazing visuals. Now here we have the. Uh, in the prologue where she's putting uh, this is Galadriel and she's putting the helmet of one of uh, one of the dead soldiers that went into war against Morgoth and died uh, a lot died uh, and one of them being her older brother and uh, that really affected her and then she's been trying to hunt this evil ever since and that's it, her driving force right it comes it, her sole motivation for yeah. for the sh- show pretty much it's pretty much just getting revenge on these evils that took away her beloved brother um who had a really really uh dumb line uh about boats and rocks in the first episode but, <laughs> you know what i'm saying here's uh I just wanted to show this because I just wanted to show how a proper water scene should get uh, filmed. Uh, you know, uh, some practical effects. Some, um, uh, uh, yeah, and then the same set as Titanic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, a uh, very cool scene where the where she, after she jumps off the boat that was taking her to Undying Lands because she has completed the mission. Uh, no one has seen this is episode one no one has seen uh sauron for many many years and uh they think the evil's gone so they're sending their warriors home to the undying lands and she's like nah he not and she jumps because she remembers that uh another dumb line that her brother had told her so she jumps off and she's like just swimming back to the fucking Middle Earth because, you know, elves are pretty much immortal until you kill them. Uh, and then she finds these people that were shipwrecked. She jumps on with them and then they're being hunted by the sea beast. Now, this is one of the only other beasts that of Middle Earth that we actually see. We don't see many of like these animal creatures. The only others were like the eagles. Right? I, I don't remember seeing like animal life like that in uh, or like these beasts like that in I, Lord I, of the Rings. I or... mean, I don't think there was anything major. I'm sure there were like a few things here and there, but it was like nothing like on the status of the eagles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you'd see something like, Oh, here's a rabbit, something like that. But Would I you wanna say there the might have been trees? something. Would you consider the trees as like mythical beasts? Or what mm. about that fire thing that Gandalf brought? No, so so that was a demon that was like I forgot what it was, but it's like the equivalent to like. I see. Um, like so, there's like these evil forces, like Morgoth and whatever. Like they're kind of you could say like they're like the jinn or devils of this universe, and then you have like the wizards who are like the angels, and then they have like these sub demons or whatever, which is what that demon was. Uh, I forget its name. But yeah, so this this beast we see this beast. It looked pretty interesting uh it's it's fucking huge and uh we actually do see eagles in the first episode when they were fighting the dragons and that shit got fucked up and i was just like oh look it's the eagles nice um 
but yeah, and um, the only other interesting thing that happened uh, in the first two episodes was this guy, the stranger, uh, who came down in a meteorite kind of thing. He crashed on Middle Earth. He was found by the Harfoots, and we don't know who the fuck he is. And a lot of speculation says this might be Gandalf. Um, I've also seen a lot of speculation say that it's not Gandalf because supposedly Gandalf came in the third age, but who exactly. knows? They're doing whatever, I saw that too. whatever they did. So uh, they, <laughs> they were also saying it could be Radagast the Brown. Uh, I don't think so. There was, uh, there was a video that I saw on YouTube that was making a lot of similarities towards him and Gandalf. One being able to... Uh, like, talk to the fireflies. Talk to the fireflies. He, when he was like getting angry, things got dark. He could control fire, which is something Gandalf was able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a lot of similarities. Uh, also, the runes that he was writing. Uh, someone mentioned that he wrote one of those in the Hobbit on Bilbo's door. Uh, and the oh, letter. where he scratched it in so that the dwarves knew which house to go to. He marked they, the exactly. Door. They were saying that it could be Gandalf too, because like this could be how Gandalf got close to the hobbits. Like, you know, yeah, built yeah, they were explaining because he's so close with them. This is how he could have, you know, built the rapport. This is why them. he has a trust in the hobbits and like the halflings and the Harfoots and stuff like that, because they're the ones who have helped him throughout his adventure, uh, his mission in uh, Middle Earth. But if this is Gandalf, this is one of the most interesting thing that's happened in two two hours is the introduction of younger Gandalf who yeah. can't speak um who doesn't know who the fuck he is uh and you know one um one thing i want to mention uh, well two things uh, first off i mean yeah if it's gandalf that's cool and all i kind of hope it's one of the two blues like the other yeah. dwar- the other wizards yeah, yeah. that we know nothing about um yep. that tolkien wrote about but he never expanded upon yeah. that and um I would say pay attention because I forgot. I'm pretty sure it's in Lord of the Rings, not The Hobbit, like the Lord of the Rings trilogy movies. Mm-hmm. There's one point where they call Gandalf by his elvish name. So it's like if a, anything, a Lauren. Yeah. something like that. So I would just keep an eye out for that. For if at any point he interacts with the elves, which I'm sure he will, just see if they give him a name like that because that might be something where people – like it might just be thrown out there and people are like, oh, I wonder if this is Gandalf. Like, no, they kind of just confirmed it right there. Yeah, yeah, so I would yeah. Say, I would just say to anybody who's watching this, just keep an eye out for that, for Gandalf's elvish name. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. The elvish uh, – no, not the, the dwarfish uh, mountain. When we get introduced to that, that was beautiful. Uh, I thought that was a really cool scene when you were jumping, when they were coming down and they had the sweeping camera view, the the way you, they're using the mirrors to bring sunlight in for their vegetation. Mm-hmm. Like the the world building is really well done. Um, and then you see like the growth between the, um, like in time of the dwarves and like their skills and in, in craftsmanship. And Elrond is going because... Um, he went to the dwarf. The dwarf prince is supposedly his friend. They're having issues. There's like that a little bit of funny banter. The the wife finally meets him. And uh, he wants his help to build this forge, right? Because like if they want to, because if Calibrimbor wants to do it by spring, like dwarves are the only ones who can do it in that short amount of time, right? And it's a huge forge. Um but his friend was pissed off because because uh, yeah. the elf's life is like pretty much almost close to immortal. Yeah. And so he left to do whatever he was doing. And then the dwarf was like, you missed out on all my life and, you know, yeah. my family, my wedding, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the Elrond was just like, I, I, I didn't know. Like, you know. Yeah, he was like, 20 years might be a blink in eye for an elf, but it, I lived a lifetime in, the, in that time. And uh, you kind of see Elrond like realize this and how it is because you 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 see elrond doing saying almost that same thing to his daughter when she wants to marry uh aragorn. the aragorn thank you i want to go through quick, some of the characters question. the dwarf uh, was his name Durin? yes yeah okay Durin. i don't remember why but i remember it being an important name in previous movies so um, this is prince Durin the fourth okay you guys can see my screen right yes yep. so see this is prince too. Yeah, so this is Prince Doran the Fourth. Uh, this is his wife, Princess Disa, 
and then we get to meet his, the children, but we don't actually see their faces. Um, they were covered, which is which is interesting. Uh, these are the elves that we've met. This is obviously Galadriel. Um, this right here is Elrond. We got to meet Arandir. Arandir. That's Arandir. another name that sounded familiar. I could be wrong about it, but I want to say it was... You know, so I'll do this quick. So Aragorn and Liv Tyler's character, um, Elrond's daughter, I'm blanking on her name right now. Okay. Um, they had the romantic relationship. I want to say, and I could be completely off base with this, because they're two different species trying to, like, you know, like, be together. Um, I want to say at one point they referenced an Arandir, which I feel like, if that is the case, I could be completely wrong, is interesting, because that is exactly what's happening in the show right now, where you have an elf who's trying to be with, like, a human yeah. woman. So, I, Ar- like I said... Is her name Arwen? Arwen, yes. Arwen was Liv Arwen. Tyler. Thank you. The daughter yeah. of Steven Tyler, lead singer of Aerosmith. Yeah. But um yeah. I I heard I read somewhere that this guy is in the same clan as uh Legolas. So uh Yeah, okay. the Woodland Elves. That's that's pretty cool. I, I kind of want to see more background into their into their clan. I remember Legolas <laughs> only missed twice. <laughs> <laughs> um but Elrond is half elf. So Perfect. what was the other half? But we we got to chin. see this now. It's huh? half chin. Look at that thing. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah, that is a pretty, that's a pretty serious chin. <laughs> uh, and this is Lord uh, Celebrimbor, uh, the uh, smith who will be forging the rings. Mm-hmm. And then this is the High King, uh, Gilgalad. And um, he's the king of the elves uh, at, in Middle-earth. I don't know if they have another king in the Undying Lands. Potentially. Yeah. He's called Higher King. It's called yeah. it's called Valinor. There's no D. I was saying it Valindor, Valinor, yeah. but it's Valinor. Yeah. So we didn't get to meet any. Well, we got to meet him. What? No, Alindy. not him. I don't know who he is. No, I don't know that guy. Is that Jack Black? No, Southlanders. I never know. <laughs> no, so these... like Jack Black. <laughs> so we got to meet the, the Southlanders, right? We uh, she's the love interest of Arendir. Arendir. Arendir, whatever. Arendir. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> We got to meet Hal uh, Halbrand on the um, the floating. Uh, uh, what is what oh is that picture called? you just sent? Yeah, yeah. Um, the like water. The name of a sword. And then uh, Theo, who found a sword with um, the mark of oh, Sauron. Sauron. And then when his blood hit the sword, the sword started growing, started healing itself, which and is very glowing. interesting. The, yeah. uh, the insignia, the uh, Sauron insignia started glowing too, which was, was pretty cool. Hey man, yes. Sauron's freaky like that. You got a little blood on it, it starts getting bigger. You never know what happens. You better yeah. watch it. I'm about to leave my girl some insignias. Tell me that third dude, like real quick from here, it doesn't look like he could be Jack Black. Well, he could be. Jack Black. <laughs> so, so we have, not, <laughs> we have not met anybody from this kingdom yet, or these uh, these people in um, in the show yet. But one stands, one name stands. Sealed out. Door. Ah, very very much Isildur okay okay now is this the same Isildur from Lord of the Rings so. I don't think so yeah why not Isildur with the broken sword remember this is th- how so how long ago is this this should be like this is the end of the second age so I've I've been thinking this, this... series is going to end with the great war where they quote unquote kill Sauron and they take the ring away from him that's where I think this is ending but then, the ring, then, oh, the then series, Galadriel is going to age quickly. Like, it's God a different damn. actress. You can't think that way. It's a different actress. I guess. You can't yeah, think that but way. I thought the same maybe thing this... with Gandalf. Like, wow, Gandalf looks a lot like Magneto. Why would that happen? Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> you know, it's a different actor, different actress. I, okay, I guess. Yeah, man. But uh, I was I... thinking maybe this could be another Isildur, um, like his, his like predecessor, and then he just gets named, uh, you get the same name, but. Could be. Like it's a Sildur line. the fourth we know yeah. that we know. <laughs> but Sil- Sildur Jr. <laughs> but yeah, Isildur is the one who cuts uh Sauron's fingers off that had the ring, and then he's the one that also had the chance to throw the ring back into Mordor, but chooses to keep with Elrond. It. Yes, with Elrond, uh where he was yelling at him. Listen, man, if Hugo Weaving is yelling at you to do something, you fucking do it. Alright? You don't you don't fuck around. That's V right there. V for Vendetta. 
Exactly. Um, it's also Mr. Smith. Like, come on. I, don't know. I have no respect for that character. <laughs> okay. And these hey. are the Harf, uh, Harfoots. Um, we have Eleanor, a.k.a. Nori, Brandyfoot. Uh, we have her best friend, uh, her father, her mother, and uh, this really angry uh, Harfoot right here. He's he's always mean mugging. I don't Man, know. Always like, oh, Man look looks Australian. Look at the it's like those black Australians. It's crazy. Uh, the the Aborigines. Yeah, the Aborigines. That's, That's the proper term. <laughs> I was trying to think. <laughs> like, what is it called? I can't think of it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so these are the characters so far that. I guess these are the only characters that we'll have uh, as of this season. Uh, we have not met any of these characters yet, but I'm looking forward to meeting Isildur and seeing what he is like as a youngin. Um, and then we have this dude. I don't know who the fuck he is, but I don't know. Captain we'll see. Avenger. I don't know. I thought yeah. Nori was cheesy. I was like, she is just... Farazan. Like the... Yeah. I think the the most interesting about the Harfoots is that they found Meteor Man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, man, we, we we're trying to find something. Inter- Excuse me. See, can't speak English. Uh, we are <laughs> trying to find something interesting about this show. We're we're reaching here, but it, there's not much. <laughs> there's like, they're not has, giving us. It has the potential to be something it, huge. Now, it, one thing I want to point does. out, which I've said on numerous occasions on this podcast. I don't like prequels because you know where it's going. So it's like that right there for me, it's, it's already a detriment. It's like, I already know I'm not going to be into the show that much because I know where it's going. I know what's going to happen. I, you know, it's like, so at the same time, it's kind of like, all right, all right, it is what it is. Like they're going to create the ring. So going to be all powerful. They're going to have a great war. It's going to be a whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, the stuff that happens to get there. Yeah. That could be interesting. I, I mean, I like the Lord of the Rings IP as we all do, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. so far, it's not fucking interesting. It can it's be. Like, you know, it has. It can be. Obviously. Yeah, hey, I, I hope it does. For sure, yeah. is there at any moment they can flip a switch? And I'm hoping yeah. they do. Like, and focus more on like better storylines and trying to bring everybody up and and just bringing I mean, up all the, these storylines without making any of them like super interesting. That's, that's what I feel like. There's just so many different people that they're bringing up and and as you showed there's still more people that they need to introduce yeah. and it's yeah. still just like kind of it's kind of flat I, I i care about these the meteor man and and aaron deer aaron deer is that i take it? Aaron, yeah. deer. aaron deer i yeah. like him uh you know a lot of people gave the casting a lot of flack because he's black but i it's it's 2022 man it's the, this is a progressive never, age that literally changes nothing about the about the series like it's it's so stupid for people to get mad i never at understand that. i looked him up people... he's from puerto rico <laughs> he's not even black that's like I, he might he could possibly he's be but he, he was color. like he was born in puerto rico and i think he was but raised in new york it still Listen. sucks that whenever they cast like people of color it's just like oh god oh, oh, I, I, I don't understand this isn't how it was like yeah. why people These get upset just... when a fictional character uh, is being portrayed by a different race yeah. actor. Yeah. It's a fictional character. Who gives a fuck? Purists, like, purists just love to fucking find something. Man. But at the end of the day, I mean, there's so much all, other worse things about this show than fucking. <laughs> like, at yeah, the end of the day, that's, that's this whole w. series is about unity and like fellowship of like all these different uh, cultures and species, races. And yeah. So racist. So it's like it's so stupid for fans to get mad. Oh, because this guy's this color or or this race or this something. It, it's so silly, man. I hate I hate that they do that. And so it's any annoying. of y'all fans that are watching, you can go take these. Yeah. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, that's all. You want to give me the one real quick? Give me the biggest thing you can have, like the biggest picture you can possibly get. <laughs> what do you mean? There we go. Give, I want bigger than this. Give me, give me the whole screen. This is what I want. <laughs> this is what I want. So we're talking about. I'm looking straight into the. Ooh, I'm looking into the camera. All right. Ooh. So. <laughs> We're talking about, oh, it's, it's, it sucks because it's starting off slow and this, that, and the other. And I've been saying for years, I don't want to give something past 15 minutes if it doesn't start strong. And I just want you guys to know, I blame all you. I blame all you, the people. All you people who go out there <laughs> and you're just like, oh, it gets good. You got to watch it for seven years and then it's going to get better. No. This is where it led us. This is the route that it took us. And I've been fighting the good fight for way too long. And now everybody, oh, oh, let's start talking about how it's, oh, it's too slow. I've been saying it for years. Years I've been saying this. It's all your fault. So now you have to live with it. It's the hell I've been in. Welcome. 
That's all. Oh I'm lord, I loved that. I loved it. I loved it beautiful, so beautiful. much. So invigorating. You should, you should do that more often. <laughs> Request the big screen. Just give me the one. Just give me the yeah, one, and I'll just be rant. Like, be like that song. Give me the big one. I'd be like, I got you, bro. Let's fucking go. Uh, <laughs> I specifically said you people. I'm glad you caught that, Henry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you people. I saw uh, some random article where it was like, since so much random stuff has happened, they were like, is Legolas going to show up in the show? <laughs> it was so, it, it was wasn't so supposed to be in The Hobbit. They threw him in there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's and, very true. You know, these elves can last pretty much forever. So it's like. I wonder if they would. I feel like if they throw him in, he could be like a young elf, like teenager or younger at this point. (laughs) Still play by Orlando Bloom, though. It's still Orlando. They got like young makeup. It's older Orlando Bloom playing the younger, like, less. That'd be perfect. It's like, it's gonna be like Stranger Things, what they did to Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, (laughs) just put him on a smaller body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That would be hilarious. So weird. But uh, I I remember what I want to say, guys. I remember, finally. There you go. Stay quick. There you go. This show came out the same time, around the same time, obviously, as the House of Dragons. Now, one thing that's different: House of Dragons uh, has been fucking great. Uh, uh, obviously, they're on episode three, episode four coming out this Sunday, and from the first episode, this show, dialogue, visuals, like, has just been super gripping since like the first episode. Now. Obviously, each person has their own opinion. This is my opinion. This is how I felt about the show. Um, it gave me season one Game of Thrones vibes, and I really enjoyed it. Now, unfortunately, Dan, you weren't on when we did the review, um, but I kind of want to hear your thoughts about about. Um, I've been waiting. Ga- I've Game been waiting. Thrones. I've been waiting for what? Uh, do you want me to give you the big one again? No, 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 no. no, no. I, before we do that, I want to <laughs> say something about the Rings of Power and the uh, House of the Dragon before I forget. Yeah. I was yeah. talking to Rudy. Cobra Kai, September 9th, which is tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Cobra Kai, check it out. It's great. Watch Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi for life. But um, the uh, I was talking to Rudy, right? And he was telling me that uh, something very interesting. I was talking about House of the Dragon. And he was just like, yeah, you know that um, Lord of the Rings, like it's, you know, the Rings of Power. It's like getting reviewed. I was like, yeah, I know a little bit about that. He's like, yeah. Did you also know that HBO Max put episode one of House of the Dragon for free on YouTube the same day Rings of Power came out? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> that's, that's, He's that's like, genius. you look at it. I was like, oh, man. I was well, like, they that's put, crazy. Did they put it on YouTube or on? Because I saw it available on their website. They're like, you can go watch it Maybe for it was free on, on HBO I, Max. I want to say he said YouTube. I could be completely wrong. I, You know, he might have just said they gave it out for free. No, yeah. So the first episode, they released it for free. And I was like, this is genius so they can get people to sign up because it was really yeah. good. And then that and was, specific day. like, Is the first day. Lord of the, oh, that's so <laughs> smart. That's so smart. Good yeah. for them. But yeah. Um, so yeah, do you do you want my opinion on House of the Dragon? Hell yeah. No, you're lay giving me us, the bro. one. I lay it on us, bro. I wasn't I expecting hear, it. I want to hear lay it. Lay it down. Lay it down. Many years ago. I walked into an FYE. <laughs> the year was circa into... 2015. No, yeah, earlier than that. When did, when, did, uh, when did Game of Thrones come out? The original show. Oh, damn. Uh, it came out when I was in college. So, All like... right, so the, I want to say maybe like the end of the first season, I walked okay. into an FYE. Okay. And I bought something that I probably don't need. And then when I was there, they said, hey, we have the first episode of Game of Thrones on DVD. 2011 it's for one penny i was like one penny they're like yeah i was like all right i'll take it so (laughs) i had the dvd and then i remember going home and telling my mom hey you're a big fan of lord of the rings as am i this is a medieval type of setting it's called game of thrones and i hear it's really good let's watch it pop the dvd in and game of thrones happened and uh i'm sitting there with my mom there's a lot of nudity (laughs) yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was senseless yeah. Tyrion, there's Tyrion who's a little person just out there just just hanging with hanging with hoes you know but it's fucking bitches yeah and i was just like yeah so after that was over like my mom was like i don't like the show she said me neither and then i walked away from game of thrones then i remember trying to go back after talking to everybody you you know saying like oh yeah game of thrones is a great show let me go in there let me watch it i go in there and i, I make it about halfway to the to the first season i'm like you know what man this is this is just 
I'm not feeling there's too much random nudity. It's like I understand why they're doing it, but they're it's excessive. It's unnecessary mm-hmm. and it's annoying and it's taking forever for it to be interesting. And then that was it. And then I remember we did an episode on the podcast that said we're trying to get Dan to like Game of yeah. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the end of the episode, I made it seem like I was going to give it a chance, and I just shut the whole thing down. I was like, I'm never going to like the show, blah, blah, blah. But I did at the end, I did in the end say, I will get Game of Thrones one more chance in the future. I don't know, but one chance in the future, I'll try it again. Here we are. House of the Dragon comes out. I have to talk about it for the podcast. Family emergency, I can't be on the episode. So I saw the first episode with my mom being here. The person who was there when I first saw Game of Thrones. And <laughs> oh, was God. Okay. So I'm putting on the show. I was like, what are you watching? I'm like, watching house of the dragon it's a game of thrones spinoff which she didn't remember she's like oh let me see it this looks like lord of the rings i'm like yeah <laughs> she's consistent she's consistent oh, i hit play we're sitting there and she's interested she's interested in what's going on there is random nudity uh mm-hmm. you have you have damon having sex with the prostitute for way too long um granted it wasn't no. long yeah, it wasn't it was a lot random. this season. I don't think so. it was random. I think she uh, she she plays into the the later episodes. I so agree, like, and I would have replaced that scene with the, what happened immediately after. You didn't need to see him getting like a okay, good like right, six seven right. back shots. It could have just been him, like just walking over to the thing. They both are obviously naked, and she's like, "What's wrong with you? We just I just spent this amazing evening with you." Oh, I don't. And they could have done the same exact thing without showing the sex. Scene. They yeah. could have done it like just showing like a candle or something. Yeah. You hear it, and then they then, walk over. It, it, then later on, right, when they right. show him in the brothel, where they show, like, yeah, exactly. Later <laughs> on, they show him in the brothel, and then you have, like, all this crazy stuff going on. That one, it didn't upset me as much, because yeah. you're in a brothel. I understand that. That one, yeah. I was, I'm was, i okay. It's like, I don't hate the nudity. It's just, like, make it make sense. Yeah. Um, With that being said, it's a really good show. Um, House Ooh! of the Dragon is is uh, very interesting, very compelling. Um, oh I'm, my I'm, god! I'm enjoying it a lot. Oh my god! Um, dare I say I am enjoying the show so much? And Eslam, get ready for this. Don't I'm enjoying it. it so much. <laughs> I went in. I was like, I'm gonna give Game of Thrones that last shot. I promised Damn. I was gonna give it that last <laughs> shot, and I finished the entire first season. How'd so you like it? It's not bad. Um, it's good, man. It's not god. bad. I'm, I'm yeah. not I always bad said you had to I get know. past that first season. It yeah, was, uh, but see, see the say, first season of House of one. Dragons. This is how bad Lord of the Rings is. We're talking about Game of Thrones again. So the first <laughs> season of House of Dragons is super political. It's super dialogue heavy. Which there I always told some, you, uh, I don't mind. Some, I remember everybody no, saying, I "Oh, but you have to be with political." I was like, "I am cool no, with no, that." No, no, no. That's yeah. what's great about it. It's giving yeah. me first season Game of Thrones vibe because that was the first season. It was Ned trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in King's Landing. And, like, he's going through all this shit. There's very little action. He's, like, going to talk to people in the markets. He's going to talk to this blacksmith doing this, doing that. He's, like, how the fuck is the Baratheon children all blondes when they've always been brunettes? Like, like he's doing, like, detective work. And it was so fucking great. And, like, we're getting almost the same type of story here where... Not the same type of story, but, like, the same type of political, um, like action about like the throne and like you're getting to see how these characters are moving like who's who's the little finger of this cast like you know what i mean and it's it's so fucking good man and rings of power was a fucking disappointment when when they do show action too it's like worth it too like you see dragons or like uh, that last episode where damon you know was fighting those people in the cave i was like this is this is awesome and And me being all the the dialogue to get there like was worth it too it's not just like uh, okay you're just counting the minutes until the fighting it's like this it actually is compelling and that's that's how good house of dragons is compared to lord of the rings like we're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one thing i do want to point out in true me fashion um is uh so you were just talking about that scene uh disco with it's like damon's going through and he's fighting the people in the cave like the crab feeder and his crew and it's like this badass scene. he's going out there he's pretending to surrender and all that stuff and me being who I am, of course, it's an action scene. I fell asleep. Um, so <laughs> it's like woke, I want to see the talk. Damon had the head at the end. Like, yeah, it was like I just – I literally – I went back. Dude, I had I half went his back. torso. <laughs> like Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I went yeah. back. I rewatched it, and I fell asleep again. I went back, and I rewatched it. I just hate action. I yeah. can't help it. I hate action. So um, uh, I saw that. And like I said, anyway, long story short, well, not even short, it's long. But um, I enjoy it. I'm going there. I'm, 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 dude. I'm so happy. 
I'm yeah. sorry. You have look no at Henry. Idea. Henry you in the chat. He he, yeah, uh, he double he, gasped. Um, yeah. he, <laughs> he's he's surprised. I mean, I've I've been I've been shitting on uh, Game of Thrones forever. Yeah. Now I'm saying season one was good. <laughs> I watched season one a little while ago. I, st- I have yet to start season two. You know how yeah. I am with shows. I'll like something. And I'll n- never watch it again. Yeah. Henry, Made in Abyss. I enjoyed it. I never went back to it. I'm weird. <laughs> but- <laughs> it is what it is. I- I'm just I- happy you're enjoying uh, House of Dragons. Yeah. Like, like- because because if you-, if you have to watch something for the podcast, it's, yeah. it's nice that it's enjoyable. Yeah. And I'm glad. Um, yeah. I-, I feel like Thank that's you, not going to be the power. case. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, I feel like that's going to be the case with the Rings of Power. But mm-hmm. hopefully it gets enjoyable. We'll see, but I've been taking like episodic notes of uh, Lord of the Rings because there are like very important moments that I want to touch on when I'm we sorry. do the finale. Yeah. Um, but uh, my God, I can't, I can't wait. Ooh, I look forward to that shit every Sunday, bro. It's like appointment television is is back, and uh, I'm not Lord there the... yet. I'm, not, I'm like but, I, I missed the last episode for a few days, and I finally watched yeah. it. But yeah. Um, but. I think Game of Thrones is the perfect show for appointment television. Like, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, to me, that's what it is. Uh, so, very excited about that. The uh, Game of uh, House of Dragons? or Yeah, what did I say? Game, Game of Thrones? Thrones? Well, it's Game of Thrones, House of Dragons. Whatever. Are you going yes. to watch okay. Made in Abyss Season 2? Henry, I never Thrones? finished Season 1. Game of Thrones is good, except for the last season. But that's, that's just because they rushed it. Uh, honestly, it could have been really great, but... yeah. He's still finishing the books, so once he yeah. finishes the books, I'm gonna read the whole series through, but or at least other, listen to it on audiobooks. But all the other um, seasons to the, prior to the last one, I, I enjoyed. So uh, I mean, that's just my opinion. But hopefully, yeah. hopefully you keep going. Hopefully you enjoy it. But just uh, be wary of that last season. It's not the best representation of it's what. It's me. <laughs> watch, watch that be my favorite season. He's gonna be. Yeah. This is the best season of Game. If oh, I could make it there, if I could make it there, I'm like, this yeah. is the best. Everyone's dumb. Like, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's my bidding by the end of it. No, um, I don't think so, because there's a lot of action, and it's just really uh, just smacked together. So I really don't think you're going to like it. Hey, man, I love the Star Wars uh, sequel trilogy. That is true. That is I true. I love it. And it's not like, oh, I like it. It's okay. No, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, why don't the you only marry one. it? I would have a good Well, that's... Uh, that was a great conversation about Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, a little bit of Star Wars. I too. think we're done with Lord of Rings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that show was just not it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Tell us below, please. I want to hear from you. Um, the person who uh, uh, gave us the their amazing knowledge when we reviewed the trailer. Uh, what what happened? And we put an emoji in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, please. Cat getting ready to sneeze or something. Like. Yeah, it's something like that. Um, That's amazing. That's you, please, you're you're a huge fan. If you are, if you do watch this episode, please let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm, I'm looking very forward to hearing from uh, someone who said they were um, a huge fan, who've read all the books, who've read some uh, Sir. Mil- Whatever the fuck the book is called. Samarillion. Thank you. Um, I can't speak today. Um, he says Samarill. This man was talking about Samarill. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, go check out the Los Wise Guys website. And then uh, please go follow us on our social medias. Uh, um, good news, Dan. <laughs> Warner Brothers Discovery confirms DC Fandom 2022 is oh, not I happening. I know. I gave it a thumbs Aren't up on happy? Twitter. I gave it a thumbs up on Twitter when I saw this. <laughs> I am so happy. I feel like the part of me that was lost in the dome can now find its way back to me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, oh my God, you don't understand how excited I am to not have to watch this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I was like, no Thank DC God. fandom. Death it was extra dome. long for no reason. They're just going to release the news as it comes. They're still working out their uh, DC universe, uh, DC cinematic universe with Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill. And uh, they canceled Batgirl. Obviously, if you guys watched the podcast, we mentioned it before and you've heard it on the news. Um, and I think uh, one of the other reasons is because they are trying to save the continuity that The Flash is going to put forth. And that might be bringing back these characters such as Henry Cavill, Superman, and Ben Affleck's Batman. Uh, but we'll see if that's even gonna happen because there's no confirmation yet of either of them coming back but 
it is what it is. Oh, and thanks to IGN for um, creating these uh, snippets of news uh, on their Instagram feed. Lord of the Rings, The Ring of Power draws in 25 million viewers in the first 24 hours uh, of its release. Um, I feel bad for all y'all 25 million. <laughs> yeah, uh, us included. The, the whatchamacallit? Damn. House of Dragons. <laughs> Man had a gas. I don't know if that was a gas for a sigh or both. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it was a pause. It was a dramatic pause. <clears throat> House of Dragons uh, had a similar uh, view count, but like it actually like crashed the system because uh, a lot of people tuned in uh, right when the episode released. Right, they had 24 million views uh, over the 24 hour period when the first two episodes were released and that's 25 million viewers uh, over two episodes where house of dragons had almost that many on one episode and then the next episode was released a week later and my last piece of news is gaming news xbox game pass friends and family plan confirmed initial pricing and uh, details revealed um this will be uh i think you could do up to four people um on one plan and um, Xbox is uh, changing the game again uh, with their Game Pass subscriptions. Uh, doing this um, really helps a lot of people out. It makes games even more accessible to people. Um, if you can't, I guess, if you can't afford the fifteen ninety nine a month uh, subscription, um, I, uh, or because right now you can't share subscriptions, right? So if you have two household members, each have their own gamer tag, they would each need a uh, yeah. subscription but this makes it easier for them to share a subscription with their each individual gamer tag just making it that much easier for people to have access to games shout out to xbox uh this for doing is this. um this is something i've been hearing people want for a lot of specifically yeah. shout out to one paris lily this man's been wanting to have people do this for a long ass time he's a he's a big xbox fan and uh he's on a couple of different uh pockets. he does some kind of funny stuff he does mm -hmm. um Oh, I forgot the other one he does with Danny Garcia, but it's it's also a very good podcast. Um, but yeah, this band's been preaching like to the word of the family and friends plan for the longest yeah. time, and we always make fun of Nintendo. We're like, hey, Nintendo comes up with like great ideas or horrible ideas. Nintendo did this first. Like, yeah. this is a thing on Switch, which is like it's great, but at the same time, it's like nobody really needs Switch online because you nothing plays well online on the Switch. Yeah. So it's just like the fact that like that's Xbox why Switch online is like fucking three dollars. Like, yeah, it's just like it's it's trash, but it's like <laughs> Xbox doing it actually means something because like uh, Game Pass is such a huge deal. Like that, it, it's it, the thing is they we say it all the time. Microsoft isn't focused on selling you consoles. They're focused on selling you Game Pass. Yeah. So the fact that it is a family and friends thing, that's what matters. Like, you don't need to have a console. Just you and your family, and, get a phone, a computer, And I think this is literally stuff. the perfect time to release this mm -hmm. because of the recession. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are hurting for money. Um, inflation is ridiculous. Can't afford that new console. Right? If you can't afford it, Xbox Find is literally it. telling you, listen, you don't need to buy our console. Uh, if you can, great. But if you can't, you can do cloud gaming, get the Game Pass. Oh, you can't afford multiple accounts. We got you with the family plan, right? <clears throat> Xbox is literally like, we want you to have your entertainment through the hardest times um, of your lives, including this recession, inflation, all this crazy shit that's happening. So shout out to Xbox um, that they keep doing this for the fans uh, and the gamers. You know what I mean? So... And uh, they have the money to be able to back it up. And they have a lot of subscriptions for Game Pass. So for people like me who pay for it and barely play it, um, you know, it, it helps even out for the people who pay for it and literally play every game on there. So, yeah. um, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help uh, with my... Uh, with my yeah. paying and not playing. Phil Spencer's just making sure every time he checks him out, we got that Islam check? All right, we good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're there you go. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> you're welcome. Can you see that? Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. I don't mean to laugh, especially with it's this just, situation. The picture the you picked you is... Said, can you see that? And then that face magically appears. I feel like the, a little bad. but The it, picture okay. you picked is, is perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
She, uh, yeah, those of you Queen can't Elizabeth see, please, II please. has officially passed away at the age of 96. She was the longest serving monarch. She uh, started at the age of 25 mm -hmm. uh, after her father passed of like uh, uh, respiratory issues. Uh, she, she's, she's amazing. She's done so much, especially she's been an icon. She's mm -hmm. definitely legendary in, in the eyes of, of UK and, and worldwide. Uh, just just to even be the longest serving monarch alone is yeah. just amazing. Uh, King Charles uh, has assumed the power after her passing. Uh, every all her children, you know, came to visit her. Uh, it's it, I honestly, I, I kind of felt like she was Betty White. You know, you know how they just yeah. kept yeah. lasted forever. I was just, I thought she was gonna be here forever, and, and it's kind of sad to see her go. It'd been so funny to see Betty White play her as a, in a biopic. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been but, funny. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, but I don't think the Keith, Queen was funny like that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, just talking. But uh, at the end of the day, I you know, rest in peace. Uh, she is definitely an influential figure in our history. And ain't no game, deserves... ain't no Game of Thrones happening in that uh, kingdom. <laughs> <clears throat> she ruled yeah. with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. She said, Meghan Markle, you are banished. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll joke Dude, aside. There was you know, a fucking, sorry, the internet just is the best thing ever. There was a meme where it was, uh, <laughs> it was like the queen when Meghan Markle comes and visits, uh, comes to her funeral. And it was uh, a uh, Undertaker GIF of Undertaker and Andy Orton when Undertaker was in the coffin. Oh, when he Andy grabbed the throat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I was fucking dying, bro. I just saw that before the podcast too. I was dying. I was Yo, crying. that shit was He's so just like, funny. Yeah. Wrapped her by the throat, just like oh, I can imagine her doing that to Maggie. Like she Yo, would too. <laughs> the internet is undefeated. I love it so much. So much, so much. Side note: uh, I remember watching that episode of Raw. And I was just like, Undertaker's obviously in that coffin. Like, why is Randy opening? Yeah. Why is he? Why is he that close staring at him though? Like, yeah. I, I saw yeah, some other some memes Diana. that had Princess Diana like locking the, the gates of heaven, and you see oh, wow. like this old lady like on the gates, like literally like five feet, like holding on to it. Like, <laughs> I uh, the internet is literally unmatched. But uh, I was just oh, like, my first thought was like, uh, like Prince Andrew was like. I'm safe now, because <laughs> like, I was like, dude. I, I honestly thought they were gonna do to him like they did to Princess Diana, because of all the pedo shit. But you know, um, but my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my, um, aside, you know, yeah. you know, uh, rest in peace. I hope she, you know, is in a good place right now. She, huh. she's definitely uh, a historical figure and she will go down in the history books. And, you know, even, even though all the drama with her family, you know, I, I know they all care for her. They all showed up for her. And, uh, uh you know, it's, uh, is a moment in history that will, will not be forgotten. Uh, yeah, what, definitely. what were you saying, Dan? Uh, I was just saying, I was at work when I found out, uh, like our instructor, like told us about it. And then shortly after I went on my break, my mom had texted me and she's like, Oh, you're the queen. Dad. I was like, yeah, no, it sucks. So for no, the family's okay and she's like yeah i'm gonna be the next queen i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah man. there you go nice nice <laughs> this picture of the queen though just looks like she's staring into my soul like yeah, man, it's, it. it's like like i said if you are just listening to the podcast version of this please this has been a very fun episode to visually watch Please yeah. watch it, and I guarantee when my news pops up, it's gonna be a little bit more entertaining as well. But <laughs> oh my! But yeah, uh, God rest her. So uh, on to our next story, which we kind of covered during the episode because it, it uh, entails mm. it. This is off the website Screen Rant by Warren Elliott, uh, just bringing back the Aaron Deer racism. Uh, we already put in our two piece, uh, but you know, I just hate when those purists hate 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 on the show just because it's not the exact the same especially for something as whimsical as uh, a skin color and and race or whatever you know why don't you hate yeah. on the show because all the writing sucked <laughs> exactly <laughs> How about that hate on exactly. it for that reason exactly they, well, they the, squandered the... so many opportunities with morgoth they chose you know the harfoots which i heard never even existed uh, in an original like uh, they did more. um did they yeah, I just I saw him mention it before, and I was gonna wait till the end, but I'll, I'll just do it right now. 
Um, the person who kind of told us what was going on when we, as yeah. and I reacted to the uh, to the trailer for the show, mm -hmm. um, they did mention they were like, yeah, there's different types of like um, halflings, and Harfoots are one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just want to shout out this person. Their name is Rickard Matson. Rickard Matson knows their stuff when it comes to Lord of the Rings and the Rings of Power and the Hobbit and all Middle Earth and the Similarity. And so I got it in there, and all that stuff. So Rickard Matson, thank you, and I uh, hope you check out this episode. Uh, shouting you out. Honestly, yeah. definitely a super shout out because I, I I love when people comment and tell us like, oh, this is wrong or this is what it really is. I, I love when people just drop that knowledge in like a nice, friendly way because you yeah. know we're all just really informative. To spread. We're just trying to spread information too, but you know we're yeah. we're just normal humans, so it's awesome when people comment and be like, oh, this is that, this is this. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, it just sucks to see it. Uh, you see it everywhere. You see it with uh, Ahsoka. You see it with uh, you know, all types of popular. Yep. IPs or whatever, um, whatever that, whatever. Uh, IPs, IPs. <laughs> what, especially with this character. My girlfriend has a thing with her students. It's called EPAs or IPAs mm. or something. So I, I those are the beers. IPAs. That's a beer. <laughs> I, I why is your there. Why is your girlfriend IEPs. giving her students beer? IEPs, IEPs is what they call. So I, I, yeah. I get all these acronyms confused. But uh, at yeah. the end of the day, I, I really kind of do like him as that character. I mean, I don't know if he's in like the books or anything. I'm not super in depth knowledgeable, but from just watching the show, I, I, I kind of like his story even though he's kind of like this mysterious l figure i want to know more about him and i want to see if legolas appears in his storyline if not you know still whatever i still want to know i mean about the fact dude. that there's like prejudice against the character and in real life is insane like it's literally the same thing reenacted in real life that's happening in the show yeah and uh yeah so that's that's one story that we, we pretty much already covered so i'm gonna move on to this next one he does not deserve that he's doing a good job boom here we are. Next story is the Teletubbies reboot that no one asked for. <laughs> uh, but it uh, has an official release date. It is November 14th. And uh, one thing that I did find interesting about it is uh, the uh, actor Titus Burgess is going to be narrating it. And he's from The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And I actually did watch that show and I loved it. He He's this like spicy gay black dude he, he's just very funny very oh, I know charismatic him. so i'm very curious to see if he's kind of like gonna give it like a new spin new edge new new flavor so i, I kind of am interested but at the same time i'm very turned off like this is the second teletubby reboot i don't i, I don't even think we need anymore you know <laughs> i think we need to take this ip and and burn it and like look never at this talk look about at those it again. Yeah, look at those satanical faces. Like, I'm not trying to see this. I'm not trying look to show this. Look at those eyes. They're like, like this is going to steal someone's soul. <laughs> All you need is in those pupils to put the, the eye of Sauron, and then boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it'd be but, on top of each one of their heads. <laughs> Just the eye of Sauron. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, November 14th, uh, Netflix is uh, going to release the the second reboot of Teletubbies. And uh, I don't know if we're going to all be ready for it, but it's happening. Um, there's been a whole lot of like wrestling uh, stuff, like a lot of wrestling drama coming off. But I want to start off with some good stuff. I want to talk about some good news. First things first, I want to talk about uh, WWE, who's been killing it lately. Um, they have a returning uh, wrestler, one Braun Strowman. So Braun Strowman is a monster. He was literally called the monster among men. He was one of the people who got uh, kicked out because... They wanted to fire everyone, and he was like a big star that they thought was going to, you know, survive the releasings of uh, everybody else in WWE, and he wasn't. He was getting paid too much money, and they were just like, yeah, you, you can go. We don't need you. Thank you. And then he kind of just it, went off, did the indie thing. What's up? Isn't he like McMahon's niche too, big and strong? Exactly. He's literally what Vince likes. It's like... He's, I don't know if he's seven foot tall or if not, he's like on the cusp of it. He's like 300 something pounds. <laughs> this man can do a kip up. He's one of those big men that could kip up. Like this man's an, a monster. He's an athletic. He's fast. He's strong. He's not the greatest wrestler, but he's, he is very entertaining. Uh, perfect for WWE style of wrestling. So, you know, Triple H, of course, bringing everybody back that the people enjoyed watching. So Braun Strowman being back is definitely um, something fun to see. And I do want to mention, speaking of Triple H, 
Um, I talked about it on the podcast before, where Triple H was uh, the head of like talent. Um, not talent. He's the head of like storyline stuff, basically. So uh, Triple H uh, has actually already been promoted <laughs> to another position. <laughs> uh, so Triple H is the um, he got promoted to the chief content officer. And uh, they revealed uh, who his replacement's going to be, which I'm not going to necessarily talk about. I just want to focus on Triple H getting his new thing. Um, but Triple H out there, he's killing the game. Um, actually, don't you, don't even. I was about to say, don't even bother sharing. I was going to move on to the next one. But um, there you go. Look at Triple H. Look at that beard. Why isn't this man Kratos in a movie? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> been saying that for the longest I always, time. I always thought he could have been Thor. Yeah, with the hair. Yeah, that's that's a very yeah. good point. He could have been yeah. a very good Thor. A lot of people used to say that. Um. Another one I just want to mention real quick. You can leave it on Triple H if you want. Uh, somebody else got – so somebody from outside of WWE got promoted to Triple H's current position, and then that person has an assistant. And that assistant is oh, somebody who's promoted from somewhere else, that person being Shawn Michaels, of course. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Shawn Michaels, who's been, like, running, like, NXT, um, he's in there, and he's, like, got the new – he's helping out the guy. So Triple H and Shawn Michaels together were, run, like, running NXT at its greatest – height so it's like seeing sean be there helping with the big picture stuff along with triple h and this other person that's going to be great for wrestling in general and this is something else i want to talk about i want to talk about some new japan pro wrestling um scroll up just a little Ooh bit up. so they announced that nobody there's going cares to be about a... that old japan <laughs> they uh they uh announced that there is going to be a new international brand um, and they're going to, it's funny cause they're saying that they're going to have talent from Australasia. Um, and, uh, it's going to be the New Zealand, New Japan dojo. Um, the young lines that come out of New Japan are like, they're dealing with like the most strict of the strict. Like you have to learn the thing. You have to like live in the dojo and it's like crazy. Like the way they learn how to wrestle there. And then they did, uh, they did a dojo in LA which is like these guys that came out of L.A. are insanely good wrestlers. They're not all Japanese, they're, but they still have to follow the Japanese method. Seeing that they're going to do another one in New Zealand, where there's a lot of people coming out of Australia and New Zealand in terms of wrestling, I can't wait to see them learn. Like More people like that learn the Japanese style. It's going to be insane. Like I, This is just amazing news for wrestling as a whole. They're not all necessarily going to end up in New Japan, but getting their training from there, that's one of what? the best places you can get trained. In pro what wrestling. makes what makes like the J Japanese style uh, different? Uh, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so there's a lot of different styles of pro wrestling. Uh, J Japanese pro wrestling specifically, you have stuff like you have the Kings Road style, and then you have like Strong style. Uh, a lot of people, Kings Road is kind of like the traditional, like you know, they go out there, they have a match, and you know, they it's the predetermined outcome, quote unquote, and you're going out there and you're just putting on a good match, putting on a good show. Strong style, same thing. The only difference is you it's a lot more hard hitting, a lot more no selling, which I think you guys should know what selling means by at this point. Um, if not, I can explain it. Like faking it. Uh, so selling is like, if I hit you, you're, yes, you're faking, you're acting like it hurts really bad. Yeah. So a lot of strong style means no selling. So you're doing, you're chopping somebody in the chest for real. And you're leaving a handprint, and like you see, like the blood forming on the chest, and you're just standing there, and you're taking it like a monster. And then you go back and forth. You're throwing forearm shots at each other's face, and you're just taking it. That's the strong style. It's like shot for shot. Like, yeah, legit. So you have like, arm, let's go. One person I always talk about, Tomura Ishii, the Stone Pitbull. He's known for like he has like some strong style. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, who's in WWE now, he used to be known. Oh, well, he still is known as the King of Strong Style. Nobody hit harder than Shinsuke. So it's like. Seeing people come out with that style where it's just like a lot of people say wrestling's fake, right? When you watch these guys fight, yeah, it, it's not like they're really fighting, but a lot of it you could see they're not pulling punches. Like they are doing stuff. So it's like it's, it's, so, a, it's so a cool it's, style it's to like, watch. It's orchestrated, but they're really going at it. Like those hits Tell are what, hitting. <laughs> it's orchestrated violence. That's what I'm going to call it. Ah, uh, oh, I love that. Boom. Yeah. Teamwork. <laughs> Thank you. Teamwork. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, so seeing them come out with a new thing, that's, that's incredible. It's a shirt right there. Orchestrated <laughs> I, I really do like that. I feel like we gotta write these ideas. <laughs> um, this one is just gonna be an image I pulled off of uh, either Google or I don't even know anymore. Um, but here's a, here's another one. I just gonna do a quick thing. So AEW, I'm gonna transition to AEW now, which this is where all the news is coming from. It's been insane. Um, oh, this is from the DuckDuckGo thing. It's a cool browser if you guys ever want to check it out. Um, so 
AEW just had their all out pay per view and they introduced these new trios titles and the winners of the first ever winners of the AEW trios titles are the elite that being the young bucks and Kenny Omega um the executive vice presidents of AEW there was this cool tournament they went out there they won and they had a very hard fought battle against uh the dark two members of the dark order um whose names I can't remember at the now, at right now and ah cowboy shit himself cowboy shit himself adam page um <laughs> okay. that's his thing he does what? cowboy shit <laughs> okay um so yeah he really literally shit he shit himself yeah <laughs> I, I worded it weirdly so yeah. they had this amazing <laughs> phenomenal match a six-man tag and these are your first ever um trios champions in aew making kenny omega the first ever triple crown champion in aew history uh him being a former aew world champion a former aew tag team champion with hangman adam page cowboy shit and now the trios champion well winning winning the first ever trios championship um so that's not the only title that changed hands at the aew all-out pay-per-view another one that changed hands was for the aew world championship between john moxley and cm punk last time they fought moxley went out and destroyed punk they had the rematch of the pay-per-view and Punk, as you can see here, was victorious. So Damn, he's fucking bloody, though. Jeez. Oh, dude, it was a Looks massacre. Beautiful. Like this was a violent fight. Like, hey, man, talk about strong style. But um, <laughs> these guys, they 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 went out there. They had a really good match. Um, Punk, he wins the title back. So he's the first. No, I'm sorry, he's the second ever two-time AEW World Champion. The first being Moxley, the guy that he beat. And apparently, this is John Moxley's first ever singles loss in AEW history. This man's been with them from almost the beginning. And this is the first time he's lost in a singles match. So yeah. seeing that it went to Punk was like a pretty, really cool moment. Um, and after this happened, uh, we finally got confirmation about another wrestler that had been missing for some time. So remember a little while ago, I talked about um, the pipe bomb. The MJF pipe bomb. Um, so CM Punk wins the title and they were the first time. And MJF goes out and he gives his pipe bomb i don't want to be here anymore fuck you tony khan fire me please fire me i want to go to wwe shit like that and then mjf has gone from tv for months people are speculating whether or not he's still with with AEW. he comes out at the end of the show he won the right to fight any champion he chooses earlier in the show it was kind of cheating or whatever we didn't know who he was he was masked and then it was revealed at the very end it's like cm punk wins the belt Everything goes black, and then you hear Tony Khan on a phone call speaking to somebody that we don't know. And all you hear him saying is like, listen, I want you back. I don't care how much money it is. I want to bring you back. Don't worry. I'm not going to force you to sign a contract extension. You stay for the end of the contract, but I need you. You're giving me good numbers. And then MJF comes out. The biggest heel in pro wrestling who then gets cheered by the entire audience because everybody's <laughs> like, we want to see where the storyline goes. So the fact that we're getting to see MJF, the one who's delivering this new age pipe bomb, going against Punk who's given the biggest pipe bombs in wrestling history. Yeah. Tells for amazing storytelling. And they fought once before, and it's one of the best storytelling, one of the best stories. The pipe Maybe... bomb match. Did you say exactly. pipe bomb or python? Pipe bomb. P-I-P. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, seeing them go at it is going to be phenomenal. They already had one uh, feud in AEW, and it was just the story they told was incredible with these two wrestlers. So seeing them now in this stage is going to be great. Or so we thought until all the drama started happening after the pay-per-view. So, Eslam, I'm going to wait till you pull this up. I want to read mm -hmm. this one for verbatim what it says. Okay. Sorry. One no, second. you're good. Take your time. Take your time. I need a breather. I'm speaking fast. <laughs> uh, get ready. This, this is where wrestling went insane this week. All because of the drama AEW has been causing. So... There was a backstage fight right after the pay the pay per view happened. There was Damn. biting, chair throwing, and CM Punk was involved with the fight with the AEW executive vice presidents. So what happened was CM Punk they <laughs> they always do a media scrum after the show where they talk to the wrestlers. You have the reporters there and stuff with Tony Khan. And the very first question was, "How are you? How are things with you and Scott Colton? Scott Colton being Colt Cabana, a guy who used to be best friends with Punk." They stopped being friends. Uh, Punk, who uh, got sued by WDB, then he was uh, Scott Colton, Cole Cabana was also getting sued. Then they had issues and they had to counter sue one another. It was a whole mess. And they've hated each other for a while. 
And Punk is out there. He just had this intense match. He's tired. And there's been so much drama, apparently, in AEW. I haven't gotten a chance to really talk about this on the podcast, but there's been a lot of backstage issues, apparently. And Punk goes out there, and he's just like, I'm a fucking adult. And here I am in 2022 having to talk on whether or not I'm friends with someone. Like, I haven't talked to this guy in fucking years. And he's just cursing everybody out. You can see Tony Khan's face. Like, he's freaking out. And Punk's like, this is bullshit. Because when you have people who pretend to be executive vice presidents go out there and spreading bullshit rumors about me, blah, blah. So there he's talking shit about Kenny Omega and the Bucks. And then he decides, you know what? He talks shit about Hangman Adam Page, who he's been pissed at for some time. Because Hangman said something that he considered unprofessional live on TV. So Punk's out there just talking shit about everybody. He shits on everyone. Um, He promotes, like, this muffin that he's eating from some place in Chicago. He's like, go get there. They have great muffins. (laughs) He goes off stage, and then they continue with the press conference with other wrestlers. While this is happening, uh, from one specific camera angle, you see a uh, a security guard running, and you don't know what's going on. Tony Khan's there. He's continuing to do the, um, the uh, the promo, like, interviews and stuff. Later on, he's trying to get somebody else to go on stage, and it's supposed to be Chris Jericho. And Jericho is not showing up. They're like, okay, what's going on? Jericho finally shows up. And you see Tony Collins, like reading a text message. Like, that's weird. And Jericho can't, kind of seems flustered. Apparently, he wasn't supposed to be here for the interview. It was supposed to be the executive vice presidents. Um, but what was happening was CM Punk and one of his good friends, A Steel, were backstage in a fist fight with the executive Damn. vice presidents of AEW. <laughs> Apparently... Uh, Steele, who is a friend of Punk and is like one of the trainers backstage, um, he goes out, he punches, no, he pulls the hair of and bites Kenny Omega. Jeez. Um, Matt Jackson of the wow. Young Bucks tries to throw a punch at Punk. He misses. Punk goes back. He hits him. A Steel, I believe, also threw a chair and it hit Nick Jackson, the other Young Buck, in the eye. Um, Michael Nakazawa was also in the fight, as was Pat Buck, another person. These are more people that work backstage and stuff. So there was a legit physical fight between all these people backstage. That's their real hard style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was it was crazy. So there was like a whole lot of fucking drama, and everyone's like, "This is this is bullshit." Like, what what is going on? Like, nobody's even talking about the pay per view anymore. And so it's like you have this big thing with CM with uh, MJF returning, and the focus is now the backstage drama in AEW which a lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, it's just not fun to be there anymore, which is interesting because you look at WWE, Triple H is now in charge, and everyone's so happy to be there. Everything's doing yeah. so much better. And now AEW, which was the greatest place, now everyone's like, yeah, backstage fucking sucks. It's nothing but politics, and we all hate each other. So it's interesting seeing this dynamic flip. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it looks like CM Punk might be suspended. It looks like there was an injury to his arm during the match. Which is, sucks for is him. Is that the truth, or th- are they like orchestrating like uh, some crazy big another storyline? Like this is MJF? what um, yeah. So this is what a lot of people are speculating on. Is like this could be a work, but if this is a work, this is not good. Like they're not focusing on MJF. Like that should be the highlight, but instead yeah. we're talking about something that didn't happen on TV. Mm. So it's like yeah, it could be a work, but if it is, that's a really stupid way of doing it. You know what I'm saying? So that it's makes like, sense. Yeah, yeah, see. like they just did like this thing for weeks and weeks with MJF's just setting it up. Yeah. Uh, and then they finally get him in there wrestling. And then all of a sudden the same night they're starting this, the this same shit, shit over again. Yeah. That like, doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's like just a lot of drama and stuff. And there have been reports of drama that backstage. Yeah. Apparently at one point there was like this whole meeting where it's like a lot of wrestlers went up. It's like, listen. All this shit's leaking out. There was a fight backstage not too long ago. Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara. Eddie Kingston threw a punch at him, and he got suspended. So with that being happened, and that was now the precedent, hey, if you get into a fight backstage, what happens? So now everyone's like, all right, this is CM Punk. He's your world champion. These are the EVPs. They're literally executive vice presidents, and they're your trios champions. Are they going to get suspended? And it, uh, I didn't see last night's episode of Dynamite, but I was reading. Um, I think I do have it here, but I don't need to pull it up. Um, they were uh, all relieved and stripped of their titles. CM oh, Punk wow. and these people. And oh, now, mind wow. you, this is like they just won the titles. Yeah. This so now like zero tolerance. <laughs> exactly. They're all stripped of their titles. There was one point where the Young Bucks and Kenny, the EVPs, threatened to quit the company. And like these are the people who started AEW. You know, like they created this company. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Uh, there's reports that Bobby Fish, who I talked about last week, that he was gone. Apparently, he and CM Punk have a lot of drama as well. So it's like all these people are just there. There's a lot of like just 
bickering and stuff backstage Did apparently. It, didn't Punk like just get there or Exactly. Know. He just got there and now he's injured again. That's crazy. <laughs> so oh, now man. a lot of people are wondering, is this a real injury or are they just saying this that he's injured so that they could take him off T V without saying it? Yeah, with mm. with the suspension. Okay. So there's that and the uh, apparently on Dynamite they didn't explain why the titles were vacated. They just said the titles were vacated. So it's like Damn. now you have Death Triangle or Triangulo de la Muerte are now the AEW Trios champions. And there's a tournament in place to decide who's going to compete for the AEW World Championship. So that's all happening. So it's like you have these great matches with these great wrestlers, but because of all the drama, now they're all gone and we don't know what the hell's going on. Um, another one I want to mention real quick is uh, Malachi Black, who's the leader of the House of Black. Um, in AEW, it's, they're cool. They come out, they're black. He, he's like all satanic and he has like devil horns and shit like that. It's really cool. Um, is he going for the throne? The Iron Throne? He, I mean, he <laughs> looks like he could. Um, and he might be because it looks like he House left AEW. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> Jeez. He was one of the people that requested, I think, his release from WWE and then showed up in AEW and was just amazing. And he was like a heel, but everybody cheered for him. And now it just seems like he doesn't want to be in AEW. There's rumors, so we don't know if it's true or not. But at the end of his match, it all out. He hugged his partners, kissed, blew a kiss to the fans goodbye. And then now it seems that he's not going to be on AEW TV for the near future. So he could be working us or it could be real. We don't know. Um, one thing we do know is that his wife does work in AEW, in WWE still. Um, and with Triple H back. Mm -hmm. And Malachi Black, under the name Alistair Black, when he was in NXT, was the NXT World Champion. He had the most badass entrance. He was very heavily pushed. He liked working with yeah. Triple H, I have to imagine. So yeah. it's like, it's it's crazy because like you have um, all this drama going on, and it was just like it was basically nobody wanted to work at WWE because it was just trash. Like Damn, everybody hated how was, being there. How was Vince McMahon's scandal? Like the car, like the domino effect that's gonna bring down AEW. <laughs> like that's fucking wild. Yo, that's fucking wild. Dude. Like the thing that was supposed to like fuck up WWE is like help them the most because Triple H is in control, mm -hmm. and now somehow it put a curse on like AEW. Nah. The like, way that's I, wild. The way I look at it, and I've told this to people before, when it comes to wrestling, yes, I grew up watching wrestling and I love the storylines. When I got older and I started learning about the industry, that's so much more interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, so yeah, it's yeah, like it's, it's wild. It's funny. Like let's let's see, we're gonna do this the whole time. This is the Lord of the Rings episode where we talk about House of Dragons. So in House of Dragons, <laughs> yes, there's all the, there's the dragons, there's the fighting. That's all cool. But what's the interesting stuff? It's the talking. It's the po politicking. It's like, oh, who's gonna do what? Like that's that's the way it's I see the wrestling. Chess piece moves to get yeah. to the chair. Yeah. yeah. And um, one, uh, so uh, another thing. It's I'm not gonna have any more pictures. So if you want to have CM Punk sitting there, I don't care. You can cut back to just us. Whatever you want to do. But um, WWE did have a major pay per view recently in the UK called Clash of Champions. Eh, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Champions. I don't know. Something. It's Clash of something. They're in the UK. And uh, it was like this big hit. It's the first time they've had a major pay-per-view there in years. Uh, everybody loved it. And, um, yeah, man, WWE's just killing it. At the end of that, it was funny. Clash you had, at the um, Castle. Clash at the Castle. Thank you, sir. And uh, you had Drew McIntyre going against Roman Reigns. He loses. And then Tyson Fury, uh, the boxer, uh, who's had a few WWE <laughs> matches. Oh, yeah? He was, yeah. So he was ringside. And then he came out to the ring. He punched the guy in the face because he's a boxer. That's what boxers do in wrestling. And uh, he goes out to the ring. And I was like, okay, this is a cool moment. And he starts singing um, uh, American Pie. Bye, bye, Miss American Pie. Like, oh. he sings the entire song in the ring. I was like, why Why is this happening? Yeah. <laughs> why is Tyson Fury <laughs> singing this song in the middle of a WWE ring? Boxer and then, <laughs> singing in a wrestling event. That just makes total sense. And the audience sense. starts singing with him. Like, <laughs> I don't know. And then he was like, gives the phone to Drew McIntyre. He's like, do you know any songs? He's like, I only know this one song. And he said like a little part of it. And me and many other people are sitting here like, what is happening? Like, did the show finish? Or <laughs> is, <laughs> is it still happening? It's American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, but... You but just it was tuned cool. into the voice. And um, after that was over, they did a... There was an interview... Uh, thing with triple h backstage and they asked him like so with you know you're now in charge and everything how do you feel about aew going out there and being so successful and triple h hardly ever speaks about aew because of their competition so he's hearing the thing he's like it's cool i mean it's nice seeing there it's nice seeing that there's other alternatives and stuff but i mean you know it is what it is and they're like well you know they beat you guys in the ratings for so long he's like yeah well they beat our developmental system that's nice 
I was like, damn. He's just talking about like, NXT. He's like, yeah, all they did was beat NXT. They didn't beat us. Yeah. So you, you, Triple H still holds a grudge. Like they, yeah. they, they beat his baby. So now he owns, not owns, but now he runs all of WWE. You know he's coming for AEW. Oh yeah. So 100%. like this is the war like we've wanted to see. Like yeah. This is the AEW WWE war for real now. Now this, so, this is tri- this is Triple the wrestling H. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Triple who's H is who's low gonna key win tw- TNT? Like, <laughs> tri- Triple H is low key planting seeds to destroy AEW. <laughs> yeah. So it's like we're gonna see how where this goes, but I mean, it has has AEW always been like this kind of like uh, dra- drama? I don't this know. This is like fairly recent. drama. This is fairly because... recent because like when AEW first started, it was. So what happens when they lost Cody Rhodes? Cody caused a lot of drama <laughs> when he was there. I'm talking out of my ass, bro. You know okay. I mean? <laughs> but, um, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm just throwing shit out. I know who Cody Rhodes is. So I was just, <laughs> like, man, oh. just throwing a name. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Shingo Takagi. He's, a- you know. AEW needs their Khaleesi. <laughs> they need, they need yeah, their mother of dragons. Starting shit so when, when AEW first started, it was started by a bunch of wrestlers. Tony Khan, who's a huge wrestling fan, they started the company just a few years ago. And yeah. like, hey, everybody loves working here because we it's run by the boys. We know what we're doing. And then, you know, it's all well and good. And it was very entertaining, especially when WWE was shitting itself every day. And then, like, now things are starting to get dramatic. And as much as I like the guy, I don't want to put this on him. But it was, like, around the time CM Punk got there. Mm. And there has been – and people talk about in the past when CM Punk was in WWE, they're like, yeah, he causes a lot of shit backstage. That, you know, of course, I'm not there. I don't know. I as a wrestler, CM Punk's very and fucking entertaining. Um, hell, even just seeing him on social media, everything about Punk, I've always been a fan of the man. But you know, it's like yeah, all this it, stuff. It's like uh, a could lot be of like artists. Ego trip, I guess. It's like a lot of artists. You know, once they get that <clears> that <throat> fame, it gets like exactly like Aslan just said, the ego trip, where it's like, you know, I'm hot shit. Like, don't fucking yeah. mess with me. Like, you know, I can it do this be. because I am hot shit. You know, yeah, and it's like you look back to an old wrestling company that no longer exists called WCW. It was a company that was run by the wrestlers, and it died, and they had to be bought it. Mm-hmm. AEW, it's a company that was created by the wrestlers. Now there's this drama. I'm not saying WWE is going to buy them, but I'm just saying like, you know, it's like AEW tried to model themselves after WCW, and it looks like they're doing it a little bit too well. So, well, hopefully, yeah. Tony Khan, right? Tony Khan, yeah. Tony Khan's smart enough to, because he seems like he's a good businessman. Um, he's smart enough to uh, foresee what's happening and maybe take control uh, so. from the wrestlers and make it like, yeah. uh, I guess WWE, but better if if you can say that. WWE, but, who but like run by a wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which is what's kind of happening now, right now? Because Triple, Triple H, H is, is like he's he's. It's funny that they call him the game, but he literally yeah. is a student of the game. Like, he knows exactly. his wrestling. So, so having so, someone like him is, you know. Because once he's taken over, so far, I've been hearing good things about WWE. Yeah. They're making the correct moves. They're doing what what the fans like. People are coming back to work with Triple H because they yeah. enjoyed working with him before. You said he's a student of the game. It makes a lot of sense to for someone who loves it so much to be running it because they're going to – pour all that love into it you know yeah final so. thoughts gentlemen final thoughts let's start um i'll start uh just gonna say it again um you know rings of power is there but shout out to rickard matson uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they know their stuff man they yeah. know their stuff rickard matson let, if you are listening to us and i really hope that you are let us know how you feel about the game of thrones franchise <laughs> <laughs> That's, not even, that... not even Rings of Power, Game of Thrones. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> we all like the Lord of the Rings franchise. We all enjoy yeah. it. It's just some, yeah. this show is I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll explain why it's good. Yeah, hopefully. Or the execution. Know. Maybe he knows that background lore that will bring that will come forth like in the future episodes, just yeah, like Game of Thrones. You know, that I mean, first honestly, season is a little rocky. You know, but honestly, you if you look back it, at the comment, they he did say um, he was not excited about this show. Oh. Uh, because he's heard he's heard a lot of bad things, so, but he was hopeful. I, I just went back to look at the comments real quick, okay. on on the um. Yeah, I'm on there too. Um, so I I think they he called it or I I don't know if I mean it sounds like a he, but yeah, mostly. Uh, 
but all, all yeah, I, I know mean, is it's a damn shame that you got such a good like yeah. uh, so much to work with and you you produce this bullshit like this yeah. this baby back bullshit like damn come on man how many million dollars does it take to make a good i show? think they're they've they're spending they're like billions. a billion billions, dollar like that. on this and that's show. even worse i could yeah. go to homeless people or something instead of but like i've said garbage i've said before amazon uses some a lot of this shit so they don't pay taxes because they do it as a write-off as like a you know what i mean so the corporation doesn't pay taxes. So that's some bullshit too. I'm about to write off all my mistakes too. Yeah, we need to just start. <laughs> we need to start making like S corps and just get. Shouldn't start have getting bought this new through. gun. Need a write off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, start. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. My final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck it. So I don't give a shit. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. I'm done. I'm done with the I, podcast. You know, halfway through the sentence, my brain gave up. I, I can was, tell. You just kept saying so words. Just, you're just throwing just, words out there. You I said was speaking, S-corps, and then you're like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with the day. I was speaking the same tongue as the stranger from uh, Rings Elvish. of Power. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the fuck uh, he was saying to the Fireflies, I was starting to say that shit, too. That's that Valinor language. <laughs> yeah. Um, did not enjoy Damn. Rings of Power really loving uh house of the dragon um CM thank Punk you for listening to <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, i'm going crazy um rest, rest in peace queen the second uh, thank you for listening to this wise guys podcast if you like what you hear make sure to go follow us on social media um check us out there uh please uh like subscribe share rate review comment below tell us your thoughts about um game of thrones tell us your thoughts about the rings of power um give us a subscribe support the channel and um go check out the los wise guys website uh updates coming new content coming always uh you can find the latest episode of the podcast there you can (laughs) you can't can't be doing shit like that when i'm fucking all right man whoo you can tell this is the end of our day. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, dude, it's fucking can... ten thirty. I gotta wake up at six. You know, work. It is what it is. But thank you for listening. Glad we can come here every week and, you know, be brain dead for an hour and a half for your enjoyment. And um, have a great week. <laughs>